Before the season started, the Spurs were the worst team in my opinion. It's really simple for me, you know, they have no stars. I'll go ahead and start with addressing the elephant in the room, more like a giraffe, Victor Wembanyama. I have really high expectations for him. I'm personally predicting that he'll average 25 points a game, 10 rebounds, a couple blocks too. But after last night, yes, I see why rookies don't often you know, average more than 20 points a game. I don't even know when the last time that happened was. And of course, he'll have to stay healthy too, which I don't think will be as hard as people make it seem. You know, have you seen his flexibility? He literally posts videos flexing his flexibility. How many of you watching can do the splits? He has some good trainers. I'm not saying Porzingis, Greg Oden, and all these other seven footers didn't, but William Ben Yama couldn't be surrounded by a better team. He has so much talent and he has all these abnormal stretches and exercises down to a T. His health has been calculated for a long time and we can expect him to play at least 60 games, even 70 I'm guessing. I still find it ridiculous that people doubt him even after he played every single game last year for his club. And to talk about his abilities, he's a really good center. He can pass, he can use his court vision real well, and when I watched him in the summer league, he obviously wasn't being totally aggressive since it was summer league, but he was great at drawing double teams and getting assists. Many of these drives where he would come down the court, he would dish a real good pass that his summer league teammates would just miss. Now on the Spurs, he has better teammates, so his passes should lead to more points being scored. Also, he's a better shooter than most centers. In Europe, we saw him hit several setback threes, and even last night he hit about three threes, I think. And his mid-range jumper was showed off in the summer too. His rebounding should be a good with his eight-foot wingspan, and he's a really good defender as well in the paint. He shouldn't have to come out of the paint defensively, but offense is a whole nother story. He's still so skinny despite being 209 pounds that he can't back anyone down. This is a problem as he locks a post-up game, which is unheard of for a center. But wait, this whole video, I've been comparing him to a center and treating him as a hutch. But the San Antonio Spurs don't play him as center, they play him as a power forward, which is what Tim Duncan was, and this should allow him to avoid matching up with the 260 to 300 pound guys in the league. But I don't like this for the Spurs. Yes, Tim Duncan was also a power forward throughout his career, but William Young could play center real easily, as that's his natural position. He's 7'4 and he can guard real well when he uses his height, it's just that I don't like he goes for double teams leaving his man wide open. And I think he will work really well with another big, but not traditional center like Zach Collins. Don't get me wrong, Zach Collins was good last night he was getting dirty he was tough but he needs finishers who are quick who can run around who can get dirty and play big for women yama jeremy sochan is on the team and he's a dog him and women yama need to be the front court for this team that's a duo i can see winning a championship one day sorry zach collins i know you just got extended but i'm gonna leave you out for now and the thing is i don't even like sochan he was just so aggressive last night to open the game and he just missed so many shots like who does he think he is honestly like he's an inefficient scorer so why is he the one who has the ball in his hand so much it just doesn't make sense leave it to the guards and i see others have him as a top 10 player of his class but i think he's overrated he's such an offensive liability that no one is scared of but that's not his role with him anymore. just like i said earlier sochan will just need to be the tough guy since victor is pretty soft sochan has been compared to ramen as that's obviously who he wants to be and he has the chance to in san antonio Rodman can guard all five positions, and I believe Sochan can too. We'll see as he'll have to help Victor greatly defensively. Now, I want to talk about the front court. As of right now, Trey Jones is not the starting point guard, but it would be perfect if he was for Ren Yama. Coming out of Duke, I didn't think he'd make it in the league. I thought he was just a small guard with decent playmaking, but he had made a name for himself. Last season, he had 6.6 .6 assists to only 1.6 turnovers a game. That's really good for a starting point guard. He's also a decent perimeter defender, which we all know is very valuable. He's like a young Chris Paul who was in rumors of being traded to the Spurs funny enough. He was the handler for a great pick and roll game last year and has a great floater. Imagine what he can do with women Yama on the court now too. As a two, the Spurs have Devin Vassell, who actually played point guard for them last night. Actually, uh, Jeremy Solchain kind of did, but yeah, it should be Devin Vassell. Last offseason, many people considered him as the best player on this team and always had Kevin Johnson above him. And last year, Johnson was better. I'm not saying Vassell is bad even. He's decent in every aspect and averaged 18 and a half points a game. He only played 38 games last year due to a knee injury, but he's healthy again. Hopefully, he can get back to his pre injury self where he averaged 19 points a game. His hair is terrible though he looks like a girl that's what my mom said at the three is the most proven player on this team Keldon johnson he averaged 22 points a game last year as a spurs leading scorer and he's very versatile he can shoot like a guard he can guard forwards he's a three level scorer and he's the best at finishing on this team he's fairly consistent and he's everything a star is i really do believe he's been the best player on this team these past few years now but he'll have to give up that title to win Yama now i think he will and he'll become one of the better scorers as a second option this offseason the spurs also traded for a couple of players too I'm interested in what they did because it seems like they're doing more than just filling out their roster. They traded for campaign before waving him, which I'm glad for. I don't like his attitude at all, and before that, they traded for Jedi Osman, who has fallen off in my opinion, 
but got some real decent minutes last night. As of right now, he's on the team, but I don't know why. He was looking like good six years ago, but that was due to the LeBron effect, sadly. The first trade they had made this offseason, though, was the one for Reggie Bullock. He's been a solid 3 and D player for the Mavericks these past few seasons, and he looks like he'll be helping the depth for the Spurs team now. Coming in as a veteran, he shot 38% from 3 last year, and was one of the players on the team that went to the conference finals in 2022. In that series, he was awful though, and he's regressed from the looks of it. I still think he can be serviceable for Coach Popovich, and he can start some games potentially. Doug McDermott is on the Spurs still, let alone still in the league, and Charles Bassey is also in this league playing backup center. Malachi Branham led it up in the summer league too to get a lot of fans, but I think he's just an inefficient shot checker. Like, he's not good. He's not a good shooter. He thinks he is because he's a guard, he's small, and he shoots a lot, but he misses way too much. He should not be shooting. He should just leave it to Devin Vassell, to Keldon Johnson, or he, he shouldn't even be in the rotation in my opinion. Like, he should be on the Spurs G League team, maybe on the not even on the Spurs period. I don't think he deserves to be in this organization, the same organization that Wayne Bajama is on. Some Spurs fans I see say he's a bucket because he got like 20 points one game, but he also took 20 shots. So yeah, he's not. Zach Collins and Devontae Graham are still on the team. And when Devontae was on the Hornets a couple of years back, I thought he was going to have a good future, but unfortunately he's going to get a little time on the Spurs. He's their backup, but not on the long-term plans for them, I'm sure. And it's sad because he's such a good scorer. We've seen it in some games, but the Spurs don't need a scoring point guard right now. They just need a facilitator and Trey Jones hasn't beat there. He's a younger, better defender and will be the starter despite being a much worse shooter. Zach Collins is someone who is a decent center, not bad, but he's years older than any other starter on the team. Expecting Victor to not play every game, Zach is good to have, but they're not winning any of those games. He's an alright defender I guess and he can stay around the rim, still he won't fit well alongside Wembenyama. The Spurs won 35 more games when David Robinson arrived, 36 more games when they drafted Tim Duncan, but the league is just so much more talented and competitive, especially in the West. They may have the most losses once again and I'll be surprised if they win more than 35 games. That's the bottom line. Thank you for watching. See you next week.